SEC Chair Gary Gensler was interviewed on CNBC this morning. Andrew Zorkin asked about the balance between innovation and regulation, and this is what Gensler had to say. I'm very pro-innovation, but I think that we also need rules of the road. We need trust in markets and trust in finance. This innovation, Satoshi Nakamoto's innovation, uh, if it's going to meet its potential, needs to come within public policy frameworks. I think a big question from the crypto community is why? <laughs> I think a lot of people already trust this enough and they've uh, determined their own risk profile and decided to get involved, but SEC thinks otherwise. Now, this comes at the end of Gensler's comments at Aspen Institute yesterday, which many in the crypto space found quite disheartening. Uh, too long, don't read is basically everything is a security. Um, you know, even stable coins are probably securities. Their jurisdiction knows no bounds. We need more staff, all of that. And it's all tied up with a nice little bow of this is in the interest of national security. So I have a lot of thoughts about this, but I will throw to the group to start off with uh, just to get your take. Adam, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on all of this? Well, I think you know my thoughts on all of this. Like people have <laughs> for a long time thought that, uh, you know, thought that Gary Gensler might be a softer touch when it came to this because there was a perception, there is a perception that he has a much greater understanding of the technology that's underlying it and therefore should make rules that are more likely to comport with the reality that we actually find ourselves in rather than some abstract reality that policymakers would like us to be in because it would be better for them. So, that is not looking like it's going to happen. And I got to tell you, I'm not surprised at all by this. What we find repeatedly is that when policymakers aren't in power, they take positions that oftentimes are very different from what they take when they are in power. And so that, I believe, is what we're seeing here, too. Really, it means that as, in, as a you know, regulator within the space, Gary Gensler is arguably more dangerous because he's doing this and understands the ways that it is incompatible with this, which speaks to, again, not necessarily bad motives, but something's going on there because otherwise, why would you do this? To the comment about Bitcoin needing to, to come under you know, the scrutiny of regulators or whatever in order to meet its full potential, obviously that's nonsensical. The whole point of Bitcoin is that it doesn't require these structures and it doesn't require these things. And to the degree that you remove these things, you remove a lot of the arbitrary troubles that kind of come along with someone having to make a decision about who is or who isn't a good actor, right? If you follow the protocol, you can use the protocol. That's the way that Bitcoin works. It's great for freedom fighters. It also makes it usable by criminals. That's kind of the way that it works when you're talking about systems that are truly neutral and that go beyond sort of tyrannical reach of governments when governments are behaving in tyrannical ways. But uh, Nate, I'm curious, kind of where are you on this one? What's your read? I know you pay a lot of attention to kind of the, uh, the Fed side of the table. I call you our Fed whisperer quietly. <laughs> Oh, sure. <laughs> nice. Well, I mean, uh, Adam, I, I kind of I agree that that it's very apparent here that Gensler knows what he's talking about. He doesn't refer to um, crypto as like virtual currencies or whatnot. He doesn't use either in the interview today or Aspen yesterday. Um, he doesn't uh, use the kind of like weird, vague language that most regulators use. He's very familiar with it. Um, I think it's kind of uh, in Congress's court to say, like, you know, to provide some more clarity here for the space. It's very clear um, that Gensler is um, willing to kind of use uh, the full power of the SEC while also not uh, providing a lot of clarity from the SEC. Um, though I'm curious, Jen, you had some thoughts that um, I also wanted to hear from you. Yeah, just off the back of what Adam was saying, I was one of those optimistic people that thought we might see some change when Gary Gensler took office. And watching this interview this morning, I was I was really frustrated. You know, it he really does know what he's talking about, but then he says that he wants to promote innovation. And I feel like almost everything he said, aside from that he wants to promote innovation, goes against <laughs> that. You know, he, he was he was asked about the difference between securities and commodities, and his response was, well, that's been decided in the Supreme Court. That Supreme Court case is from 1945 and had to do with citrus groves. So <laughs> it's time for it's time for something for something to change. So it was just it was very frustrating for me to hear this interview. Interview. He also he he wouldn't answer on what is a security and what is not a security. So it, it's still very muddy. You know, he knows what he's talking about, but it's still so unclear. So how are people supposed to comply with with 
So there's nothing to comply with. I don't know. I don't know. I'm frustrated. Right. I'll turn it back to you, Naomi. <laughs> yeah, I think it was Catherine Wu who said that Gensler knows just enough to be dangerous, and I would agree with that. And all of his rhetoric when he finished off his remarks at Aspen and said, well, this is in the interest of national security, just a reminder that they mean, when they say national security, they mean the nation state. You know, they mean protecting the status quo, the existing power structures. They don't mean protecting citizens. And he talked at length about how, well, you know, these citizens are using VPNs to access these products that we've banned, and that's terrible. It's like, well, this is all about precluding the choices of individuals who have determined their own risk profile, uh, cur curtailing those choices. So this is not about what's in the best interest of the citizens at all. Uh, but I want to talk about a tweet. So Brad Garlinghouse actually responded to this. Uh, he said, in 2018, Bill Hinman said that ETH isn't a security, and Jay Clayton agreed. But just weeks ago, Hinman filed a sworn affidavit in court saying the SEC still has not taken any position or expressed a view on ETH status. So how is the market supposed to have clarity? And this is a great point. The ETH uh, decision that the SEC made has thrown around a lot. And we need to keep in mind that it was not a decision, but it was one of these very vague statements that they make. And then, the you know, because the, the crypto community doesn't get many of these statements, they kind of take what they can. They're like, you know, taking the crumbs that the SEC is giving us. And so we're like, okay, so they've kind of given an opinion on this. It's not like completely official, but, you know, we can work with this. And now they're rolling that back. And it seems that, you know, it's very clear that these offhand remarks they make, they, they're not legally binding. They can roll them back whenever they want. And uh, it's just, it's really difficult for the crypto community right now. And I agree with you, Jen, that this is not a good state for uh, innovation right now. 